So last fall, I took buckets and buckets of chestnuts and I buried them underground in the hope of getting them to sprout and become future trees for our farm. And in today's video, I'm gonna try to dig up those chestnuts and see if they did in fact sprout. And if they did, I'm gonna plant them and get them ready to start turning into little baby trees. Now, if I can only remember where I buried the seedlings, it's around here somewhere. So here on our farm, we have a permaculture orchard. It is a collection of roughly 600 trees that include chestnuts, elderberry, mulberry, black locust, apple. They're interplanted in the back of the duck and goose pasture. I first started planting those trees back in 2017, and each year I have replaced dead trees and brought in new trees, and it's been just a constant cycle here on our farm. It might sound like a lot of work, but it's really more patience than work. I spend probably two or three hours in the springtime, about a dozen hours over the course of the summer, and about another dozen hours in the fall in terms of maintenance and managing my permaculture orchard. And I feel like investing roughly 30 hours of work each year for something that could pay dividends decades into the future is a really important part of our farm. And one of the things I've been spending a lot of time experimenting with is finding very cheap and effective ways to grow seedlings. I want my permaculture orchard to be affordable for me, and I also want to create a model that other people could easily copy. One of the biggest expenses you have with starting your own orchard is starting your own tree seedlings. And in this video, I wanna show you exactly how I start my own chestnut seedlings because I do it a little bit differently than everybody else. You see, I start with regular old chestnuts that I buy from different farms around the country. I get different varieties, whether it's Chinese American hybrids, purebred American chestnuts, Dunstan chestnuts, and I get those different varieties. And ultimately what I do is a process known as cold stratification. Some people do cold stratification by keeping their chestnuts in the refrigerator over the winter. I find it's much more efficient to just bury them in the ground inside five gallon buckets. You see what I did last fall is I took several hundred nuts and I packed them in moist sand and put them in a five gallon bucket that had an empty bottom. And then I buried them underground so that they could have that chance to go through our winter and do the sprouting without being subjected to the risks of potentially having a bunch of squirrels eat all of them. So as you can see here, I've just unearthed four buckets of chestnuts and actually one of these buckets has acorns in it. Now, before you start opening up your buckets and planting your chestnut seeds, it's important to have a place to put your chestnut seeds. I have experimented with a number of approaches in the past. I've tried milk cartons. I've tried plastic seed trays. I've even tried putting them directly into the ground. This year, I'm actually experimenting with a new method and I'm actually gonna use what's known as an air pruning bed. So I built this special garden bed that is basically like your standard garden bed, except the only difference is it's raised up off the ground and the bottom of the bed is covered in hardware cloth. What this is supposed to do is it allows your seedlings to grow, but because they can't go deep into the ground, they actually cut the tap root off and the tree ends up making a bigger root ball cluster. If you've ever seen somebody grow like garden seedlings in soil blocks, it's kind of the same principle. Now you might be looking at this garden bed and saying, wow, that doesn't seem like a lot of space. And didn't you say you have hundreds of seedlings in those buckets? And what you're gonna see is as I start planting these, I'm gonna pack them in really close. I'm only gonna use this garden bed for about a year or two before I move the seedlings out. Either I'm gonna plant them in my own orchard or I'll plant them in other places around the property or I'll end up selling them to people in our local area. I have found that sprouting trees and having a small tree nursery is an excellent side hustle because it's relatively low amounts of work, but people are always looking to buy new tree seedlings. But I probably shouldn't be counting these seedlings before they hatch. So let's open it up and see what we got. Ooh, uh-oh, that's not good. So one of the biggest risks that you have when you're planting seedlings like this is a risk of mold spores. And as you can see right here, a couple of these definitely have it. I'm gonna wanna very carefully pull them out and set them aside. But you can also see a whole bunch of these have sprouted, but I'm gonna get rid of the moldy ones just off the top. Underneath though, they all look pretty good. And as you can see, they're starting to sprout and starting to make roots. You can see that right there, right? So, you know, it's a standard chestnut. You saw what they looked like when they went in. Now you can see that they're starting to get those roots that are coming out. So this is a perfectly good seedling that I'm gonna start burying in here. Now, in terms of what I'm using for soil, it's just basically a mixture of compost and soils from right around our farm. 
I actually want it to be relatively similar to what they're ultimately going to be planted in. I find that they, they do better and there's a lot less shock. Now in order to plant them, it's pretty straightforward. Just drop them in, cover them with a little soil. Look at that. I think Pablo caught something. Oh yes, he did. Let's go see what he caught. What you got there, buddy boy? Is that a mole? It's a big one. Sorry about that. <laughs> Watching nature interactions is one of my favorite parts about working in the garden. And Pablo Barncat was on the hunt. You know, I've got so many of these seedlings. I think I'm gonna run out of bed space. My germination rate is somewhere north of 90% at this pace, so that's pretty incredible, actually. Part of growing trees is about doing it in volume. You know, they take so long to grow, but if you can get a successful one going, it can be invaluable for your farm or homestead. That's why I like to invest the time in this. Now, you're probably noticing that I'm packing them in like crazy, and it's totally okay, because, again, they're only gonna spend a few months in this bed before a lot of them go off to other places. You know, actually having Pablo around this part of the garden is helpful for the farm too because, you know, I don't have to worry about squirrels coming over here because he's going to scare them away. Squirrel! Squirrels are probably the biggest predator you have to deal with at this stage of sprouting nut trees. Squirrels and chipmunks, I guess, and mice. But one of the nice things about the air pruning bed too is keeps them off the ground, which, you know, I think also Keeps them a little bit safer. And they're contained in a three by eight garden bed. Even though it takes a bit of space to be able to grow adult seedlings, getting these bare root seedlings going and started takes like no space at all. I mean, heck, if you lived on a quarter acre of land in suburbia, you could easily start your own tree nursery. And because I believe that the world needs more productive trees like chestnuts, I strongly encourage you to consider sprouting your own trees. As you can see, they're just set right on top of the garden bed. And I need to take some soil and cover them up a little bit. But once I do that and then add some water, they're ready to go. Hey, Pablo, old boy. Basking in the glory of your recent kill. Letting the food digest. Good for you, pal. Good for you. And mind you, it doesn't take a lot of soil to cover them. You just don't want them to dry out too much. Now to get these things growing as best as I possibly can, I do plan on watering them pretty regularly. And so to help me do that, I'm actually gonna set up this soaker hose here. Not like I have to put it down any fancy way, really. And so there you have it. Hundreds of chestnut seedlings growing away. Other than the occasional watering, I won't have to touch this bed again until September, October when the trees go dormant and I either start planting them or selling them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about our 600 tree permaculture orchard, check out this video right here and you'll see how I did all the planning and planting and maintenance and you could maybe learn something else because like I said earlier, the world needs more trees.